these words from our second scripture reading, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may go also and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me before I offer a message this morning. Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Often as we begin a new year, we do so by making a new year's resolution. We are aware that time moves on, that we begin again with the turnover of the calendar. We heard the wonderful scripture read by our liturgist from Ecclesiastes reminding us that there is a time for every season, and this is a time for a new beginning. And in this time, we often think of some new resolution we'd like to uh, begin. Many of us have had mixed success with such resolutions. I've heard that about 80% of resolutions make it until February, and that's all. <laughs> so before we do this again to our self-esteem in 2023, let's pause and listen to God's wisdom. In fact, let's look, listen to the wise men and pay attention to their story, how they follow God's lead. They guide their plans and their steps not by their own bright ideas or their own goal. No, they follow a star like this one over the manger that the children used for our children's program. They follow that star until it leads them to God's son. Who knows if they knew exactly where they would set out. In fact, they wound up in Jerusalem looking for a king and they found one. They found the wrong one, King Herod. Um, and he was surprised to hear people asking about some other king that was not him. And he began to make his plans that were dastardly and evil. And we'll hear about those in a moment. But first, let's pay attention to these wise men and how they will follow God. It's a good way to start the new year, to follow these wise men. We listen to the wise men's story on Epiphany. Uh, Epiphany Day is actually January 6th, but this is the Sunday that comes before it, so we've chosen to make this Epiphany Sunday. Epiphany means a manifestation. It means something that is revealed to us, made manifest to us. And we see these stories of the wise men, or next week, the baptism of Jesus, where we realize that this is the Son of God. This is Jesus born as the Messiah. People begin to realize it and have this epiphany, this awakening. And these wise men lead the way. It's fitting then that we would start a new year with epiphany, joining the wise men in seeking God's presence and God's guidance on our journey. 
At times we become anxious in life when something new begins. Perhaps in, in the beginning of a new year, we hope we don't mess this one up like we messed the past ones up. We don't want to mess up our resolutions. We hope we don't squander this opportunity. Our first scripture reading from Ecclesiastes reminds us that we're not alone, that people throughout time have seen time in this way. To everything there is a season, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up what, what is planted. Some of you will remember the old birds song from 1969, to everything, turn, 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 there is a season, turn, turn, turn. Beautiful song that puts this scripture to music. The writer of Ecclesiastes then says, God has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds, yet they cannot find out what God has done from beginning to the end. This is a wonderful thing about human beings. It can also be something that torments us. We can think about the past and remember what's happened. We can even think about the future and start worrying about it today if we'd like to. And we begin to occupy ourselves with these thoughts, yet we do not have God-like foresight to know what will happen. We're somewhere in between, and this can cause great anxiety. We want to know the plan. Our scriptures, however, teach us not to know, but to be seekers of God's love, of God's grace, so that we may one day inherit the reward like those wise men did when they bowed down and paid Jesus homage, when they rejoiced that the star had rested over Jesus' home, that they had found God manifest before them. Still, we live in this human predicament. We have enough intelligence to think about time, but we do not know what is to come. So we want to control things. This is what King Herod, of course, did. He wanted to control the future and remain king no matter what. When these wise men came from the east, Herod put on a good show. He said, oh, I also would love to find the king when he is actually terrified that he will be supplanted by this king. Though this expectation of the Messiah, a king who would reign forever on the throne of David, had been the belief of the Jews for centuries. They had waited and waited. Still, Herod, who was himself a Jew, didn't want any part of God's king. We know this because in the following story, he creates a plan to destroy all children, male children who are two years or younger, trying to destroy the life of whoever would be the Messiah in Bethlehem. This was a dastardly and evil plot by a man who only wanted to control the future. Imagine what he was trying to do. He th really thought that he could prevent God from sharing the Messiah with the world. He could destroy the life of the Messiah before he could become king, and then Herod would himself remain in control. Bad things happen when we want control, when we refuse to listen to God. So at the beginning of this new year, may we be seekers of God's will. Perhaps rather than creating some resolution or another that we think is a good idea, Perhaps we should listen, not guess what will make this year wonderful, but listen to what God would want for our lives. Ask God, where, where do you want me to go? We pray it every day in the Lord's Prayer. Hopefully we take time to pray this prayer every day. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We often think of that phrase of the prayer as a, applying to just our whole world, may thy kingdom come on earth, but it truly means also in my life, may your will be done in my life as it is in heaven, in my family, among my loved ones, in my church, among my friends, thy will be done. This is the best news, New Year's resolution of all, isn't it? May thy will be done, may I listen to where you will guide me. 
And if you give me a New Year's resolution, praise the Lord. If I find what I'm looking for, I will also bow down and thank you and praise you as those wise men did. We never know where the future will guide us. Those wise men brought various gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We sang about those in, the, in our first uh, hymn. Those symbolize different things. Gold would symbolize the kingship of the Savior, of Jesus. Frankincense was a herb or a, an incense used in worship that referred to his priestly role for us, his divinity. And then myrrh is an ointment that we, was used in burial. And that's why that verse 4 of We Three Kings is somewhat dark because it refers to Jesus' death and sacrifice for the forgiveness of our sins. Those are the three gifts the wise men bring. We actually don't know if there were three wise men or 30. Uh, it, it says that there were wise men from the east. Tradition says that there were We Three Kings because they, there were three different kinds of gifts. But... There could have been uh, five or eight. We don't know how many wise men ar arrived that day. And they probably weren't kings. They were magi. They were astrologers from the east. So they knew what they were looking for because God had guided them to that manger. May we then join these wise men and become seekers of God's will every day of this year and throughout our lives. I once learned a wonderful way to pray in this way. It's called a breath prayer, where we try to seek God's guidance with every breath that we breathe. It was during a challenging time in my life following college that a pastor, Odette, shared with me this wonderful book. It's called A Testament of Devotion by Thomas Kelly. He's a Quaker who wrote in the middle of the 20th century in fact, this book was published in 1941 in the heart of World War II. I can't imagine how much people needed prayer at that time. Thomas Kelly writes about these breath prayers and invites us to practice a moment-by-moment -moment prayerfulness that will keep us seeking God's guidance. He writes these words, Begin where you are. Live this present moment. This present hour, as you now sit in your seats, in utter submission and openness toward God. I find this internal continuous prayer life absolutely essential. It can be carried on day and night in the thick of business, in home and in school. Such prayer of submission can be so simple. It is well to use a single sentence repeated over and over and over again such as this, be thou my will, be thou my will. I love this one and it, it really sustained me during this difficult time. Be thou, may you be my will, what I want. Lord, you be my will, be thou my will. Or he says, you can say, I open all before thee, I open all before thee. Or see earth through heaven. See earth through heaven. These hidden prayer, this hidden prayer life can pass in time beyond words and phrases into shouts of joy. My God, my God, my Holy One, my love. Words may cease and one stands and walks and sits and lies in wordless attitudes of adoration and submission and rejoicing and exaltation in glory. Just like those magi who arrived at Jesus and found the treasure that they were seeking. Thomas Kelly explains that that treasure is found by moment by moment, seeking prayerfully with each breath. I took the liberty of writing Thomas Kelly's breath prayers on these cards, and as you exit today, you can pick one up. It has these prayers, Be Thou My Will, or I Open All Before Thee. Um, I w added one of my own, Open My Eyes to You. Open My Eyes to You. This helps me to see d different and diverse people and welcome God in 
strangers and friends and people who are different from myself, open my eyes to you. Open my eyes to you. And then there are two blank lines. If you'd like to create your own, feel free to do so. Maybe it's just a single word that draws you back to allowing God to be your guide. I invite you to prayerfully consider, take days if you'd like to, to fill out those lines and see what you might write and how God might guide you to the greatest treasure. I pray this also for our church. Many times we set goals as a congregation and we think, what should we do this year? How should we proceed? What is our mission statement? But we remember, especially today, that this process always begins with listening, with prayer. That our church would say, God, this is your church. What do you want to do with it? How will your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven? Especially as we go through challenging times in this world, as we witness all the turbulence of this world, let us return to God in prayer and listen so that we might discover what we are seeking together. May it be so. Amen.